Industry Insider coming to you from Big Sound 2013. We're here at the Judith Wright Arts Centre and joining me, Peter Cooper, Vice President of uh, its design and new production. And new production? Uh, Vice President, design and new product development. New product development, yeah, yep, that's yep. At, uh, at Road Mike's. Correct, correct. That's an interesting job, mate. It's a very interesting job yeah. and um, sort of a, a, an ideal job for someone like myself. We were sort of talking a little bit before about background yeah. and my background. So I, I'm feeling a little bit inadequate here at this event because I'm not a musician, yeah. I'm not a music industry person, but I'm a complete gear freak. Love stuff. Yeah cameras, speakers, furniture, stuff. So yeah. I, I studied industrial design, so okay. designing stuff. Uh, worked in the industry for about 15 years, had my own consultancy, and we started doing some work with Rode as an external consultancy. And the owner of Rode, Peter Friedman, liked the work that we were doing and asked myself and a couple of other key people to come on board and, yeah. and kind of lead the product development work. Yeah, okay. So, so you purely come into this business from doing uh, design and then, and then sort of what, you moved into the audio field? Or? Yeah, it's my, my uh, in sort of input, I guess, yeah. is, is the design of the object. Mm -hmm. um, there's lots and lots of expertise within the company. Uh, the founder of the company has God knows how many decades of experience in the music industry. He's worked in electronic sales, repair, live sound, installs. He's got a, a, a studios. He's got a, a wealth of knowledge, mm -hmm. um, but didn't have the, the design ingredient. So brought me in to kind of add that extra facet yeah. to the mix. Okay, okay. Now, um, so you say the build rather than the audio. Can you explain a little bit more about what you're talking about with your, with your design side of things? Yeah, absolutely. With with any product, whether it's a whether it's a microphone, whether it's a whether it's a car, mm -hmm. there's there's different aspects to that product. Uh, with a microphone, the the engine of a microphone or the heart of the microphone is the capsule. That's the bit that's doing the the core of the work. Yeah. And that's something that Rode have a whole bunch of really good engineers that work on that. But taking that technology and turning it into a product, so something that is easy to use, something that's appealing, something that considers the, the ergonomics, the manufacture, even the styling, is what an industrial designer does. So okay. it's kind of taking the technology and making it, uh, productizing it, kind of turning it into something that people want to own and use. Yeah, so is it is it more of an aesthetic thing, or is this or is the redesign of an aesthetic uh, does that help the sound for, for um, in, a, in a layman's? Thing? Yeah, they're, they're they're very much interrelated. So yeah. the one of the first projects we worked on with Rode was the, one of their video mics, one of their on camera mics, and they wanted to develop a mic specifically for use with DSLR cameras. So, uh, all right, yeah, they're the ones that came out with the the little round. Correct. That's Sock on the front. Um, yep, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, a mic specifically for that application, and what we did was take uh, a certain technology platform, so using their existing know-how around shotgun mics, mm -hmm. but then looked at what's this application and how does someone use it. So we looked at the fact that the mic wants to be relatively compact so that it's sort of a similar size to the camera. We looked at the fact that it doesn't want to overhang the rear of the camera so that if someone's using it for still shots that they're not getting yeah. their eye poked out. Uh, we looked at where do the controls sit. Um, we made sure that they were on the face uh, towards the camera operator, whereas there's competing products where the switch is around the side and you can't actually see the settings mm -hmm. when you're using the camera. We integrated suspension so that the mic is well isolated and doesn't um, pick up handling noise. And we looked at how kind of building all that in and the electronics, the shape of the body did affect the acoustics. So we went through a series of prototypes and did testing along the way mm -hmm. to make sure that the, the functional considerations, the production considerations, and the acoustics kind of all balanced out. And then almost the last thing was the styling, the, yeah. the, the aesthetics. So what was, it, what was the length in, um, in the design phase before you got to a final product? Like what was the length of testing? <sighs> Ooh, um, 
typically the products evolve over quite a period. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes one to two years is fairly typical for product development. Mm -hmm. And that is everything from conceiving the idea, developing the core technology, and then starting to integrate that into a product, doing the prototyping, doing the testing, doing the refinement, and then taking it into production, at which point there's more testing yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and okay. more refinement. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now, what what came up with the panel today? Because, I mean, I, I guess in a nutshell, it was uh, advancing technology in, in the audio industry and, and what you guys are doing to, uh, you know, stay on top of the game. Uh, where, where did that panel discussion well, start and end up? Uh, it started talking a little bit about um, changes in the industry, kind of very, very broad level stuff in mm -hmm. terms of um, ways people are, are recording music, uh, the way music's being distributed, different um, commercial models around music, and kind of using those as areas for discussion, we talked about what the different panellists are doing in that space. So in the case of Rode, uh, we talked about the democratisation of music, the fact that people can now purchase really good quality gear that lets people do studio level work mm -hmm. in their bedrooms. Whereas 20 years ago, if you wanted to get a certain level of performance, you had to pony up the money, go to a recording studio. These days with a good mic, an Apple Mac, you know, a couple of bits of interface gear, people can record at home and distribute over the internet. Um, so we talked a little bit about that. Uh, another key topic was the portable digital devices, things like the, the iPhones and iPads and so forth, and mm -hmm. talked a little bit about, uh, in the case of Rode, how they've now got uh, a product specifically designed for that application and looking to provide a genuinely pro quality mic that works with that yeah. platform. Uh, and then to a, a lesser extent, talked a little bit about some of the, the digital parts of music, um, the manipulation of signal and so forth. Yeah. Uh, the panelists were um, myself, Dave and Joe, and that was microphones, headphones and loudspeakers. So we were talking more about the, the capture and playback yeah. and not so much about the processing. Okay, yeah. Um, no, um, it's, it is really interesting the, the, the advancement of technology and, have, and being able to uh, to be able to do that stuff from from your from your home, I guess, and, and, and be very self reliant. Will, will there ever be a point, do you think, where uh, there will be uh, outside develop? You know, where technology gets cheap enough to build where you can actually start building without going to bigger people like yourself. Possibly. I mean, there, there's certainly a designer maker movement, yeah. and uh, I don't know if you're going to be talking to Dave later on, but uh, Dave from Audiofly was commenting on how, for musicians, particularly guitarists, there's a movement towards people building their own effects pedals and so forth, kind of a, a craft level mm. movement. With mics, uh, there's a bit of a barrier to entry. You, you need a certain level of equipment and precision to get the mics happening. Um, I guess what it's more a case of is the advances in technology are making certain quality more accessible, it's bringing the price down, mm -hmm. and that means that people can do more themselves, perhaps not so much with the actual creation of the, the artifact, yeah. but certainly using accessible products to, to create the music, so yeah. kind of making the, the, the creation of the music the key part. Okay, all right. Now, where um, just before we let you go, it'd be really interesting to know. With you, as you were saying, you, one to two years sometimes for you know developing new products. Where's Road at right now with new products in development? Super busy. Um, obviously, not not in a position to talk about anything that's specific. That, that's, yeah, that's, obviously, that, yeah. that's not out the door. But um, really working hard in that space. Uh, the company sees new product as a key way to, to get more and interesting products to the market. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things that I like about the company is that the owner invests very heavily in new product development and also new technologies to bring stuff out. So from certainly what I've seen 
across various industries, Rode is one of the most progressive companies and has one of the most active new product development programs that I've encountered. Mm -hmm. And I think what we'll see is in, well, what the, the public will see is in the next six to 12 months, a significant amount of interesting new product adding to what they already have out there. So uh, looking for new opportunities, um, looking for um, spaces in the existing range and providing uh, new products in, in different spaces and, and extra levels of product. All right. Well, fantastic! It's, uh, it's you know it's it's really exciting. I, I mean, that those video mics that we, we were waiting for them to come out. You can see them pre-order, pre-order online. A lot of people were using them, and it's it's getting more and more exciting. I mean, right down to that shotgun mic right there on the camera uh, is a road, and oh, and but, but from about five or six years ago, okay, and that yep. thing picks up. It is a directional uh, shotgun. Yep. Yeah, obviously, shotguns are directional, but it. Yep. Um, it's 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 weird. Some some of the sound that comes out of that just from shooting live gigs, pointing out that you're picking up quite a bit more than you should be from a directional mic. And, yeah, uh, it, it, it can be a, uh, sometimes a little bit too revealing. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and hence uh, you, you mentioned before about the, the on camera mic, sort of the the, the round one, so that's yeah. sort of a, a stereo one for capturing ambient and looking to provide a range of products for different applications well, just, rather than just, a, yeah just to look at that from five years ago to what you're doing now it's, it's kind of exciting to see what everyone's doing so um you know it'll be exciting to see where the, where the future leads with sound and uh, thank you very much for joining us it's an oh, absolute pleasure my pleasure thank uh, you take care peter here from road mics uh, at big sound 2013 uh, we'll talk to you soon for industry insider <laughs>